Hey programmers, welcome back. It's time to learn a new topic in programming. And what I want to teach you right now is about conditionals in JavaScript. So if you want to follow along during this lecture, just hop into VS Code. I have my VS Code open in my little lecturing folder. And I'll just create a JavaScript file inside. And the big topic for right now is conditionals, like we said. So far in the course, we've been writing a lot of code. But what we want to do now is design our code in a way where it behaves in a kind of dynamic fashion. So let's start. Why don't I begin by declaring a nice number variable? So I'll create one called number. And I'll make it some number. Doesn't matter too much. And then from here, I want to work in a conditional, right? And so to write a conditional, I'm going to need some new syntax. And I begin with a new keyword called if. All right, so it's a special keyword. That's why it's called red uh, in my editor. And what I want to do after that is open up some parentheses and also some curly braces. So this syntax looks pretty new for us. And so what I need to do is write a condition between these parentheses. A condition is just an expression that evaluates to a Boolean, right? So try to recall all those operations we can do with Booleans or ways of getting Booleans. So here, if I want to utilize my number, what I can say is if the number is greater than zero, then do some code. And so what this if statement says so far is if my number is greater than zero, then run the code inside of these curly braces. And so what I'll do is I'll just add some console.logs inside just to see that run. So what I'll do inside is print out the string hooray, and then also it is positive. And now I want to run this code, make sure you have your terminal right next to your file. So I need to just run node conditionals.js because I'm already right next to it. Now let's see what happens. So notice that I do see my messages printed out, right? I do see hooray, it is positive. Because of course, when I evaluate this code, first thing I do is create a variable called number, set it equal to five. Then in the if statement, I'm really just checking if five is greater than zero. I know that this expression evaluates to true. And so I run the code inside. And what's great about a construct like this is I can now conditionally run these two console.logs. In other words, if I gave, let's say a negative number, like negative six, I know that this condition would now be false. So that means I do not run this code, right? So I run it now. And I don't execute that code. I don't run anything over here. So let's add some relative console.logs here. So let me say over here, I'll say before. Then after the if statement, I'll say after. Let's give this a go. Bearing in mind that my number right now is negative six, right? So I just see before after, which means we skip over this code on line nine and 10. And now if I set my number to 11, I know that condition would be true. So when I run this code, I'm going to see those messages, right? So before, hooray, it is positive, and then after. So this is an example of a plain old if statement. And the only thing we need to bear in mind is inside of the parentheses, we need to write an expression that evaluates to a Boolean, right? And we call that the condition. You may also notice that inside of the curly braces, we can write like as many lines of code uh, as we want. And all of that code will run when the condition is true. When it comes to styling this code, what I want to do is make sure I indent all of the code within these braces over here. In other words, I don't want to do this. This would make it kind of hard to read as I write more and more conditionals. To show that these two lines are inside of the if statement, what I would do usually is just indent it one level. So let's keep working on this code and let me extend this conditional. So right now I have a simple if statement. What I can do is work in an else. And this actually chains right after the if statement. So notice how I style my code over here. What I can do is write code inside of these else braces that I want to run when the condition is false. So let me do a few things here. What I'll do first is console.log and I'll say boo. And then I'll also say it is negative. So let's uh, run this code, bearing in mind that right now my number is 11, right? So you probably anticipate what happens here. So I evaluate top down, I print out before, nothing fancy there, and I check my condition. Is 11 greater than zero? That's true. So I print out hooray, it is positive over here. And since I've entered this part of my code, right, I chose this condition, I actually don't execute the else statement here. But I continue running any code afterwards. So that's why I print out after as my final line. And so when you have an if else statement, what happens is you're guaranteed to enter only one of the regions of code. So let's say I switch my number around and let's make it negative seven. So I'll try that and I'll run this code. Notice what effect it has on my code, right? I don't run lines nine and 10 because my condition is false. Instead, I just enter my else statement and print out boo, it is negative. So this is pretty useful. Dependent on a Boolean expression, I can run some code or some other code. Let's try another example though. Let's say I worked in the number zero and take a moment and try to predict what this will evaluate to. And so if we step through this code, of course, we're still gonna print before first and we check our condition. I check if zero is greater than zero, 
that's a false statement, right? Zero is not greater than zero. And so I would actually run the else statement over here and print out boo, it is negative. Let's be sure of that. All right, so there we have it, boo, it is negative. And that's not actually totally correct in like the mathematical sense. And so what I can do is actually switch up this code a little bit and add another conditional in this chain, right? And so what I wanna do right now is insert another branch. And so instead of writing a simple else here, what I can actually do is say else if, and then tack on another condition. So here I'm at the top, I'm saying if number is greater than zero, and over here I'll say if the number is less than zero. And then to end this chain, now I'll have an else at the very bottom, in which I'll say it is zero. So now I have three branches in my code, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna evaluate these conditions top down until we get a condition that is true, in which case we'll enter that branch, or if I get to the very bottom, I'm gonna enter my else because it's kind of like the default scenario. So let's run this code. Right now, my number is zero. And so I check, is zero greater than zero? That's false, so I don't run this code. Instead, I check this condition. And I check, is zero less than zero? That's also false, so I don't enter this code as well. Finally, I get to my else statement, which means I just must run it, so I print out, it is zero. Right, and this is a nice way to actually capture that zero scenario, because I know if my number is not greater than zero, and it's not less than zero, then it must be exactly zero. And let's make sure we didn't break any of our other behaviors. So if I pass in a positive number like five, that should print out, hooray, it is positive. And if I pass in a negative number like negative five, that should print out, boo, it is negative. So when it comes to designing conditionals, you can really design it however you want. And there are tons of different combinations, right? So I could have just like a plain old if statement by itself. I could have an if else statement and a lot of other variations like that. So one thing I can also do is like not even have a trailing else. So now it's just an if else if. And so if I run this code, right now my number is negative five. So of course it's gonna enter the is negative uh, region over here. However, let's say I had a zero now. When I check this code, I start checking top down. Zero is not greater than zero, so I don't run this. Zero is not less than zero, so I don't run this either. So you actually don't run any of the code inside of this, right? And you don't have an else statement to act like a catch all. So this code should just print before after. So let's keep working on this and let me switch up my example a little bit. So I'm gonna change my messages. I'm gonna take out this before and after, right? I don't need those anymore. We already anticipate the order of execution here. I'll keep this as positive, but now let me switch around this else if condition over here. And so what I'll say is instead, let me check if number mod two is equal to zero. So we're using that modulo pattern, hopefully this looks familiar. Uh, what this does is really just check if the number is even, right? Basically, if I divide the number by two, what is the remainder? If the remainder is zero, then it must be an even number, right? So over here, I'll say it is even. Cool, so that's my condition. And let's say I pass in some number like six. So let's trace through this before we run it. So what's gonna happen is we check our first condition. We know this one is going to be true, right? Six is greater than zero. So I print out is positive. And actually, since we entered this branch, we're done with our code. I don't even bother checking this second condition. Although I know if I did evaluate it, it would probably be true, right? Because six is an even number. So this code right now will only print it is positive. So what I have to remember is when I have a chain of like if else if, or really any form of like if else, what happens is you only can enter a single branch at a time, right? So it's never gonna be the scenario that right now I can print out positive and even because of the way I've written this code. But what you can do if you wanted that behavior is just not use the else here, right? So if I wanted my code to be able to print out positive and even, what I can do is take out this else. Then to make that a little clearer, the classic syntax for this is actually just having two separate if statements and not connecting them together. So I, now I have like two separate chains where I can check if it's positive and also if it is even. And the upshot of this is when I run this code for a number like six, that is a number that is both positive and even, I can enter both of these, right? So I check is six greater than zero, so I print out positive. Then I check that six is also even, so I print out it is even. And it's also possible for just one of these to be true, right? So let's say I had a number like seven. I know that seven is only positive, but it's not even, so I only print out this one. So let's try that. Nice. And the opposite is also true, right? Where if I set this to like negative six, I know that it's not gonna print out as positive, but it is gonna print out it is even, right? When I run this code, I just see it is even. That's because when I evaluate this code, I'm doing negative six mod two. It's actually gonna be equal to zero, right? And I check if zero is equal to zero, and that is true, so I print out it is even. 
So now that we know a good amount about conditionals, why don't we switch up the example uh, to review some stuff. So when it comes to writing a condition, you can really do whatever you want. You just have to make sure that it evaluates to a Boolean, right? So I don't always have to use numbers. Let's say I had a string, so I'll have like name equals Alvin. And maybe I'll use that in like my condition. So the first thing I can do is maybe check, hey, if name.length is greater than three, then do some code, right? Otherwise, do something else. So let me work on this condition, right? So now I'm leveraging my string length. In other words, is my name longer than three characters? So what I'll do is console.log, that's a long name. And otherwise, I'll console.log, that is a short name. And I'm gonna add some other conditionals after this too, right? This would be like one chain of if else. Let's say afterwards, I had something else that said, hey, if the name begins with the letter A, right? Do some code. And otherwise do something else, right? And of course I'll just write some messages for these. So I'll say that this one starts with A and this second one does not start with A. So let's run this and check it out. So when I run this code, as always evaluated top down. So I check if name.length is greater than three. So in other words, is the string Alvin greater than three? That's a true statement. So I enter this code and I print out long name. And because I've chosen this branch, within this chain of conditionals, I don't print out short name, obviously, but I proceed to any other code afterwards. So what I do is I check another condition is the first character of the name string, right? If character index zero is equal to a, then printout starts with a, that's a true statement. So I also enter this initial if statement here and I don't run the else. I can have like other variations over here. So let's say I had Bob, right? That would print out short name and does not start with A. You can have other combinations too, right? Let's say I had another name like Ali. That would be a short name that starts with A. So what helps me predict conditionals quickly is try to identify how many different chains you have. So the way I interpret this code is this is one chain and this is another conditional chain. In other words, a quick way to identify what's a chain in itself is really just look for anytime you have a simple if statement, right? So a chain must begin with if. So this is one chain. And what I know is inside of a single conditional chain, I'm allowed to enter one of my branches, right? So in this first chain, I either go down the long name branch or the short name branch. In the same way, in the second chain, I either enter the starts with A branch or the does not start with A branch. All right, programmers, so that wraps up our lecture on conditionals. Conditionals are gonna be a really important concept that we're gonna be using a lot. So in the next video, we're gonna do some exercises. That way all of you get practice actually utilizing these things, right? It's not gonna be good enough to just watch someone else write some if statements. You also want to write them on your own. That way you can get good using them.